Good evening and welcome to Queen's Sports Centre here at the Dub in Belfast for this, the McLaren Cup final between St Joseph's Grammar School, Donald Moore and Ratmore Grammar School in Belfast. As ever, at these schools finals, a terrific crowd here in the Dub for this much anticipated final. And I'm joined here this evening by a man who needs little introduction to the GA world. That is English man and former Tyrone great, played in the All-Ireland final in 1990. That's Matty Madeleine. And Matty, you're very welcome to this broadcast. Jared, you're showing your age there now. That's all I'm going to say about that there. <laughs> a lovely evening here in the dub. Terrific crowd. Great atmosphere as ever for these matches. Perfect conditions, Matty, for what should be a cracking final. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic venue. We've got a super, super night for the game. It, uh, you look across the, the pitch here, there's a wind seems to be blowing across the football field. It's an absolutely fabulous light, night for these two teams. It's their first, both, I think it's for both teams tonight, is massive because uh, one is going to head away for the cup for the first time. And it's it's an absolutely wonderful occasion. And I know, certainly from the Donald Moore side of things, they are mad keen to get at it. Yeah, well, Donald Moore playing in their first McLaren and Decider. And you have to go back to all of 2007 for the last time Ratmore Grammar played in the final. And that was when they lost out to a Michael Murphy inspired St. Eunan's Letter Kenny side back in, as I say, 2007. So let's get a look at the teams. And firstly, we'll get a look at the Ratmore team. Ratmore Grammo, grammar. It's uh, Kyo Dobrolowski in goals, better known to everybody as Kyo. Uh, full back line then of Colin Devlin, Deglin Mooney and Matthew Lloyd. Half back line of Thomas Lloyd, Connor Logue and Shea Ferris. Middle of the field is uh, number eight, Rory Grant and Owen Arthurs will wear the number nine jersey. The half forward line, one change and we'll come to that in a moment. Donna, Donica McGurk wears ten, Rory McElaine eleven and the change sees Cormac Blaney, the breed of man, drop out and he's replaced by St Bridget's man Oscar Conlon who's only 16 years of age. Full forward line then is uh, Gareth Curran will wear 13, Michael Morgan will wear 14 and Finton O'Boyle will occupy the number 15 jersey and he is the captain of the side. As for St Joseph's Donock Moore, well, they will line out as follows. In goals is the Galbally man, Leo Quinn, just 15 years of age. Full back line then, one change in the full back line we're just hearing about, and that is in the number uh, four, Johnny Field drops out, and he's replaced by Dara Donaghy, of course, who played in the semi final and kicked a couple of points in that win for St Joseph's Donock Moore. Half back line, James Rafferty, Joey Clark, and Conor O'Neill. Middle of the field, Shane Scullion and John McKenna. The half forward line, Leo Hughes, Noah Grimes and MJ Mansell. And then the full forward line is Cormac Drain, Matty McNally and the number 15, Ronan Malloy. And interestingly tonight, the two number 15s are both the captains of their respective sides. That's Fintan O'Boyle for Ratmore Grammar and Ronan Malloy, uh, the captain for Donald Moore. This Donald Moore team are backboned by uh, Donald Moore club players. I would have mixed then from Gabley and of course Clano represented, Derry Lachlan represented and Dungan and Clarks but the backbone is this magnificent minor team that has come out of Donald Moore this past couple of years. Yeah, they're backboned with some serious, serious young players coming through you. The likes of Ben Cues, the fullback who's an under 17 all-star with Throne Miners last year. This kid is one to watch for the future. I'm, this guy's impressed me in every game that we've played in that the fullback line has been so solid to keep the other teams out. And the other teams have good forward lines that they've played in the past. Uh, St. Louis, so they have, and St. Mary's, and then the fullback line uh, very, very good in what they do. Joey Clark there at six as well. Absolutely fantastic in what they do. Young James Rafferty at Galbally. Just brilliant. Yeah, well, we'll just pause for our anthem, our on the vein.
Great rendition there of our Ron Mavian and a wonderful crowd, as I say, in here to, tonight. Um, all set for what should be a classic. Donald Moore coming in, Matty, as, as favourites, however. They've had a couple of very comprehensive victories in their uh, semi final uh, over St. Louis Ballymena and, of course, in the quarter final over St. Mary's CBS. Yeah, absolutely. I was fortunate enough to be at both games. Uh, the, the way they played was fantastic. The, the first game, certainly against St Mary's, they were absolutely outstanding. Uh, young Matty McKellen had, had three goals at full forward, and you know he tore them apart with the, the, the first time quality ball that they got inside. And I have to say, against St Louis in the semi final, I don't know why it was nerves or whatever the case may be, when we were up in slot Neil, uh, they were very poor in front of goals. They, in fairness in St Louis, they put them under serious pressure and they left a lot of scores behind them that day. But you know, walking into a final today, that actually keeps their feet firmly on the ground and. Uh, it's interesting to see how uh, Rathmore will deal with this setup in terms of their forward line. Will they will they drop back defensively and try and keep the, keep the game locked out to half time, or are they going to go after this game? So it's going to be tactically very very in interesting to see how they work this thing out. But certainly, Donald Moore team they have some serious match winners and Joey Clark, Noah Grimes. Uh, Ronan Malloy, John McKenna, Matty McNally, so great game to get at it. Yeah, looking forward to it as the referee throws uh, the ball in. We're underway here, and it's the men from Donald Moore feeding the ball in. Long first time ball there, out in front, and winning it is McNally. Ball goes to ground going to pick it up and retrieve possession but the Rat Moore have loads of numbers back there and have done well, have turned this ball over right away uh, through Rory McElaine, McElaine lays it back to Deglin Mooney, Mooney spreads the play over the far side of the field, An opportunity now for Conal Devlin over there the far side, great crowd over there in front of a pack stand to, to Thomas Lloyd Lloyd goes outside, has support there, ball fed in long on this occasion, but the sweeper back there for the men from St Joseph's, uh, uh, Donald Moore was Leo Hughes, and Hughes does well, turns over possession and gets Donald Moore moving again. A little bit of space this near side of the field if uh, they want to use it, but that's a good, strong, purposeful run through the centre. Oh, one of the Donald Moore players goes to ground, has picked up a bit of an injury, the referee sees nothing in that and allows play to continue. Picked up there on this occasion by Rory Grant. Grant lays it off. An opportunity now for Shea Ferris. Ferris, only 16 <coughs> years of age, the Sarsfields player, gives it back. Don Meanwhile, the Donald Moore player receives attention in the middle of the field. Play continues with Oren Arters. Arters spreads it over here towards Colin Devlin. This is Paul's man. Devlin looks up, kicks a nice punted pass in there, but straight into the hands of Matty McDally, the Carrick Moore man who had went back deep to pick up possession. Now McNally comes again, feeds it long. This seems to be a tactic, get the ball in long and early, but this time it's left behind and it's picked up there by Oscar Conlon for the man from Rathmore gets it out to his midfielder Rory Grant and there's an opportunity for Rathmore to build again, high press on by the men from St Joseph's but Rathmore collect possession, gets it back to the corner back, that's Matthew Lloyd Lloyd feeds it over the far side of the field patience, the name of the game for Rory Grant in these opening few seconds of the game, ball held back there by Conan Devlin Devlin has his opposite uh, corner back. That's Matthew Lloyd looking for the ball. Lloyd receives it. Lloyd does well. A little bit of green grass from to move into. Lays it off there to Rory McElaine. McElaine back to Lloyd. Good football from Rapmore. Good ball inside. But again, defensively strong in there. Possibly breaking favourably for the men from Rapmore. Done well there. Picked up possession and lays it back out there to Donica McGurk. McGurk gives it back into Rory McElaine. McElaine, the man from St Bridget's. Good ball, threaded inside, excellent ball. Well picked up inside there by Shea Ferris. Ferris still in possession. St Joseph's have plenty of players behind the ball. The referee's hand goes up, allowing uh, for the player to accrue an advantage. That advantage didn't accrue, and Shea Ferris has won his team uh, a free early doors. A frantic start. Yeah, absolutely frantic start. It, uh, I have to say, I love this first time kick passing from the mm. 50, across the 50 yard line into the two inside full forward lines. They've definitely both got confidence. I really like Michael Morgan. I really like the build of him. I really like his confidence in terms of he comes out strong onto the ball. And he's definitely a serious threat and they're looking to find him. This is something Donahmore's going to have to stop though, is giving away early freeze to give them confidence. Rory McElean drops it in. Dangerous ball pulled on. is into the back of the net. The opening score of the game comes from a goal. And it comes from Garrett Karn, I think, was the man who pulled on it and rifled the ball into the back of the net. Super start. It came off the defenders, but Karen, as it dropped, pulled on a full-time Matty Madlena. Goal for that ball. Yes, uh, Leo Quinn's going to be very... He nearly gained his confidence again. That was a bad mistake on his behalf. And he's been well 
punished by Rathmore. Well, opening goal of the game goes the way for Ratmore. I'm thinking about the breeze. There's a slight breeze, Matty, favouring the men from Ratmore, but not uh, having a great impact in the game. That free, of course, from Shea Ferris dropped short, but it worked to the advantage of Ratmore because that man, uh, Gareth Curran, was on hand to plant the ball into the back of the net, and it's the opening score of the game, a goal to no score here in this McLaren Cup final. And will there be an immediate response from the men from Donald Moore? The ball fell forward again it's turned over by Rob Moore a confident start from the, the Belfast school uh, in the opening few minutes yeah listen Kevin Falloon's letting the game go which I really like there's, there's physical contact in the game lads are getting tackles and hits on and if you're going to concede a goal let me tell you in the first five minutes is the time to concede it because you have 60, you have 55 minutes to try and fix it but listen Rob Moore's confident there's a bounce to their stride now Donna Moore's just going to have to be cool just settle down for a minute or two and try and get pick himself a score Donna Moore well set up here Garold Adams the manager of the side of course an experience manager, everybody behind the ball bar, two players and up to the Donnock Moore men to try and break them down through Conor O'Neill, again the tackles goes in and the referee Paul Falloon as you say, he's a referee known for letting things go and on that occasion it was dispossessed and the ball fed for, forward by McAuley, good ball again well won again by the full force, super play there by Michael Morgan that's two balls that have went his way and two balls he's won, gets it to his captain, his captain is Fintan O'Boy, the ball spread out towards Thomas Lloyd, Lloyd lays it off again an opportunity from distance again from Rory McAuley. McAuley had a free or had an effort earlier on, but that one there well, goes to the right hand side and gone wide. But as you say, this fellow Michael Morgan, he can win ball. Yeah, even with a sweeper in front of him, mm. you know he's, he can win. He can win his own ball. Just a bit of poor shot selection there, the outside of the boot. You know, there's very few fo uh, GA players that's ever mastered that. Maybe Peter Canavan and he and Peter Canavan. <laughs> and Matty McLean, maybe. As that ball is picked up again, strong catch in the middle of the field there by Thomas. Lloyd on this occasion, the 17 year old from St. Bridget's wins his side of free gets it back there to Connor Logue Logue lays it off again, all the play over that stand side of the field, Shea Ferris threads a ball down inside goes out over the sideline, contesting for it there was Fintan O'Boyle and the uh, Donald Moore defender knocked it out over the sideline so that'll result in a line ball taken quickly in the hands of Rory McAuley <coughs> McAuley looks up, slows takes the pace out of the game an opportunity now for the men from Ratmore to come forward and try and work another score. Ball in the hands of Big Owen Arthurs there, six foot three in size. Arthurs lays it back there to his midfield partner, that's Rory Grant from O'Donovan Rossa. Over there goes the far side to Shea Ferris. Ferris, of course, won that free that led to the goals. Ferris still going, the referee's hand goes up. Ferris gets the shot away. The referee's hand comes down. That man again, Morgan, does well, won the ball. That's three out of three, he's won. His shot was well saved on that occasion by Leo Crane. The ball breaks favourably for Fintan O'Boyle, but that's a wild effort from O'Boyle. It's over towards that man, Morgan, again. Look at him go, he's won it. Again, another opportunity for Morgan. Is there a finish in him? Across the end line he goes. The umpires decide that it's gone out over the end line and wide but what a start to this game and what a start from this man Michael Morgan yeah. four balls have went his way and he's won all four yeah Ben Coos is really having a difficult time with him that's into this competition this is the first time I've seen Ben, ben Coos really been challenged but this guy Michael Morgan he's up for this football match I really love his tenacity and when he wins his ball he's not thinking of knocking over the bar or anything else he's turning taking his man on and he's a very powerful young man go, uh, looking at him there and he's going to go for goal every opportunity you can see that at, uh, if they just tighten up their shots Selection. I think playing down the hill is probably the scoring goals tonight. So interesting to see how this thing goes. But Donahue need to score to settle themselves into this football match. Yeah, Morgan, St Joseph's Glen Avey man. Uh, he's had a terrific opening uh, seven minutes to to this final. It has to be said, causing all sorts of problems for Ben Hughes in there as. Donald Moore, as Matty says, trying to settle into this game, but again, that's another poor ball, and the man who was sweeping on that occasion was Conor Lowe, got his foot in, held possession, gets it back again, and here comes Shea Ferris. If you're counting touches in this game, we, I know we've talked about Michael Morgan having plenty, but this man, Shea Ferris, from the Sarsfield Club, has been excellent so far. This time, however, commentator's course, he loses possession, concedes the foul, and the free will go the way of the men from uh, Donald Moore, but all the play is the far side of the field, and it's that uh, link-up play over there between Shea Ferris and um, Conor Logue etc that is causing the trouble there's, a, there's, a, there's an extra line in this football field and I, I was chatting to Niall Muldoon before the game started and I thought it was confusing mm. because it actually looks like the field is narrowed down yeah. so I do and that seems to be the, the, that they've condensed themselves into the, into the field 
Yeah, well, an attack now for Donald Moore. Ball threaded in there nicely by Noah Grimes. Back inside it goes. Could be a goal. Immediate response is there. Looks like it may well be. The shot was taken there by Dara Donaghy, the man who was introduced late in the day. He came on for Johnny Field. Evidently, he's not playing as a cornerback. We'll pick up exactly where he's playing in a moment, but he had that opportunity. But again, it was well defended by uh, Rat Moore. Now, Donald Moore have turned it over again. The ball inside now to Matty McNally. McNally. Gives it over there to Noah Grimes. Grimes back it goes there to John McKenna. McKenna, or McKenna from distance floats it in. Dangerous ball, but it's gone to the right hand side and gone wide again. Can't take your eye off. It's all action. You no, know, absolutely fantastic. You know, Manny McKenna in that last play. You know, he flicked the ball across the goals. The simplest option, just take a fisted point. Mm. Just, just get a score on the board and get them moving. That's all they need to do. Just not panic a wee second mm. and just keep the get the scoreboard moving. The tackling is ferocious. I, I really like what what uh, Kevin Falloon is doing. He's letting them go, there's tackling, there's contact in the tackle and it's it's a super football match. Yeah, really, really entertaining wherever you are watching this broadcast on a Friday evening uh, you nearly say a balmy Friday evening in Belfast <laughs> uh, for fe- mid-February, it's an absolutely beautiful evening up here just a little breeze blowing down the field as Matty has alluded to, favouring Ratmore, but perfect conditions on us really splendid pitch, it has to be said as Ratmore come forward again with Matthew Lloyd, Lloyd just 16 years of age, yeah. there's a free there, the referee has brought it back. Yeah, for just a free. double bounce. Yeah, just double, double bounce. bounce. Yeah. I thought Donham Moore very cruel there in that play, just to not reach in and concede the soft free. And the young man was caught in two, in two minds. So, listen, fabulous football from both teams. Well, here come Donald Moore, still looking for that opening score through the centre. It's going, but that's where Rap Moore have the blue jerseys. And again, that's terrific tackling. Again, the referee allowing it to flow. Ball being won on this occasion by Donald Moore. Referee keeping a close eye on the hands going in, but Donald Moore are able to recycle it and get it. It'll come this near side of the field by the looks of things to Shane Scullion. Scullion from the Derry Lachlan Club, six foot, uh, six foot uh, tall. Treads the ball inside. Good ball on that occasion by Scullion. Gives it inside to that man, Donny. Gets the shot away, but it's gone again to the left hand side and gone wide. And that was probably the occasion where it was time. It was a difficult angle. Probably should have recycled it and fed it into maybe a better position. Ah, it's a, no. listen, if I'm an shot inside on. forward, I want him to take the shot. So yeah. do I really do. At the, there seems to be the wind just seems to be taking that ball away off that off that far post. So it has happened on t- a couple of occasions now for Donahue Moore. The wind's just turning at that last second, but they're growing a bit more into the yeah. game. So they are. So, so Donahue's playing in the full forward line by the looks of things. Uh, number two. Uh, Cormac Drain's in there at 13 yeah. as well. They're looking for that wee pop pass in in front and then, and then Matty McCallum coming off the shoulder seems to be the tactic that they've they've set up at this minute in time. Yeah, Paul won there on that occasion. I think it was Joey Clark that fetched that one really, really well. Or maybe that's Clark there picking it up. Jersey's a little hard to identify, but Leo Hughes is the man from Duncanon Clarks that's in possession at the moment. Hughes lays it off there to Noah Grimes. Excellent players, Noah Grimes, seen him yeah. playing uh, for his county last year. Of course, uh, Ulster uh, champions, Ulster League and uh, Ulster champions in uh, 2022. Gives it to Matty McNally. McNally from uh, Carrick Moore, one of our Cranach Cup, of course, too, with Tyrone. Lays it off to James Rafferty. Rafferty gives it now to Joey Clark. Clark coming through the centre again to Noah Grimes. Rap Moore, plenty of blue jerseys back there. The challenges go in, but again it's turned over. Defensively, Rap Moore have been very impressive, Matt. I tell you what, Daglan, Daglan Mooney is tracking Noah Grimes yeah. everywhere around the football field. And even that last 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 play, he, they were waiting for the wee pop pass off the side. Donald Moore's trying to look for a goal, uh, looking for a goal to try and get themselves in the game. Just get a point and get the game moving. Here comes uh, Rory McAuley. Long, high ball on this occasion. Not the best ball in the world, but it dropped favourably for that man Morgan gives it inside opportunity still prevails that's the referee might give a penalty on that occasion Ooh, no that's a I, tight call I would have thought that was a penalty and the art of shooting there was a little tug on the shoulder Matty wasn't yeah, there out of jail free there out of jail free have to say I think Kevin Falloon just thought about it for a second and then let it go yeah. but, uh, that was a tight one and a big a big, a big moment for Donna Moore certainly was but the referee closest to the action allowed that one to uh, continue uh, as the men from Donald Moore come forward again now. An opportunity for McNally. Ball goes to ground again. The referee allowing play to continue. No foul on McNally, and therefore the if ball. You, if you're on taking the ball into contact tonight, you're in the wrong game exactly. because and Furness Groad has them really well well tutored in terms of getting in round yeah. the man on the ball. They, they've really seen that Donald Moore want to try and give and go and get through men, uh, and Rathmore and Furness them are all wait, are waiting for that, that that pass. And then there's two or three jumping on them, disciplined in their tackling. And uh, listen, a super bit of coaching from from. 
Rathmore side of things. Yeah, and they've worked that ball really, really well out of defence again. We've only had one score in the opening 13 minutes or so for this game, but it's flying by and it's entertaining as the ball now is picked up by Donnick and McGurk. Down below us here, gives it in to Oren Arthurs, 17 years of age from St. Joseph's Glen Navy. Ball fed in again. This time Hughes may well be the master, but look at Morgan going for it again. He's won a side yeah. of uh, 45 or 50 as it you is You cannot now. beat a tackling full forward. Yeah. A tackling full <laughs> forward that's prepared to mix in and get hands Make in the ball. Make life difficult for the full yeah, back. Ben had that ball all day in his hands yeah. and he didn't give it up. He hunted the ball and forced a 50. A super bit of work from that young man. Yeah. Delighted with what I'm seeing from him. Yeah, as a full forward of some note yourself, you'll be enjoying that performance. I was good looking so it was, uh, that was the secret to the whole thing. <laughs> well, we make no further comment on that. We leave all this to... I'm really maybe, impressed with Michael Morgan. Do you see his showing yeah. for the ball? His timing of the ball? He has a great re sense of, of reading where the ball is going to go. I think if they just tighten down that pass into him, he's a serious threat to them. But in fairness, Ben Cuse, maybe it's, it's a it's a great confrontation we're watching here. Them those two guys. Shea Ferris with the uh, 45 kicks. It looks good from Ferris in round the danger area. Well held on that occasion. It has to be said by the Donnacklemore uh, defender. Picks up a heavy challenge, but the referee is going to allow play to continue as he's done all night. Ball threaded down the toward the sideline. Down below us here, picked up by McNally. McNally being held up by Colin Devlin. Great tussle, it has to be said. Ball goes back inside there, looking for Ben Hughes. Out from his full back line, gives it over there towards Dara Donaghy. Referee's hand goes up, but he has allowed the advantage to accrue. Ball in the hands now of Joey Clark. Clark from Donnock Moore gives it back inside. Recycling the football now is James Rafferty, only 16 years of age from the Galbally Club. Gives it out here now, down below us for uh, Donald Moore. Ball in the hands of Joey Clark. Clark gives it forward again through the hands. It goes opportunity for Cormac Drain. Drain being quiet so far, gives it to Noah Grimes. But again, through the centre. And as soon as it comes into that centre area, the Rapmore defenders are pouncing on the danger. And that occasion, Matthew Lloyd done really, really well. Came across, dispossessed uh, Donald Moore. They've been turned over so many times. Their manager, Niall Kelly, will be tearing his hair out as Rapmore come forward again, looking for their second score of the game. It's one goal to no score. The first quarter has passed us by. Ball in towards Morgan. This time he doesn't take it. Probably too much time on his hands did Morgan and he commits a foul there and the referee awards the free to uh, Donald Moore. Taken quickly into the hands of Rory Grant. Grant lays it off. Donald Moore still seeking the first score. This time Joey Clark has a bit of green grass to operate in but is held up and it gives it over towards Jude McNally. McNally feeds it forward through the hands back to McNally. McNally fists it in Inside an opportunity now again for uh, on that occasion it was uh, Cormac Drain. Well, it gets it back again. Drain from distance. That's a fine yeah, effort from Cor Cormac Drain. He yeah. certainly has that in the locker. I've seen him a number of times playing for his club at minor level. He got a point in the quarter final. He got a point in the semi final, and now he has the opening point for his uh, school in the final. Yeah, re reminiscent of another Donald Moore man of old, Lady Eddie Cush, that left-footed uh, shooter outside of the left boot an absolutely fabulous score I'll go back a wee second to Matthew Lloyd he's part of the ca the Cassidy dynasty of, of Balahi and a fabulous black or yeah. block there an absolutely fabulous block love to see that there yeah it was super stuff it has to be said and uh, uh, good score then as a result of form three and ball now with Leo Hughes Hughes being held up on this occasion needs support has it there from the man who got a point a moment ago confidence is high but the tackles went in again just at the right time oh that ball has dropped out of the hand there of Thomas Lloyd and it presents uh, St Joseph's Donald Moore with an opportunity to maybe uh, manufacture a score but again good defensive play and that has been turned over and Rapmore very coolly and calmly worked the ball out through Oren Arthurs gives it to Rory McElean McElean from St Br Bridges Club scored three points in the semi-final gets it over here now towards Donnick and McGurk. McGurk feeds it inside. Still coming forward is Deglin Mooney, who we spoke about earlier. Mooney from the Davids Club lays it back into the hands of Conal Devlin. Devlin, County Minor in this time. And of course, won another champion on the 14 championship with his club, St. Paul's. A few years ago, gives it forward there to Oscar Conlon. Conlon was a late replacement on the side for Cormac Blaney. 
who was scheduled to start, gives it over to Shea Farris again. Farris loves to take on his marker on that occasion he does, but the referee says that he carried the ball into the tackle, carried it too long, and the turnover has been forced by uh, Donald Moore. Yeah, I see Donald Moore have, have now caught on to what's happening in the full forward line. They've dropped Leo Cues in as a sweeper, and Joey Clark back into play either side of M Michael Morgan, and it's sort of stopping them from putting that long ball into the square just at this minute in time. Coming forward now for Donald Moore is James Rafferty. Rafferty, a little tug on the shoulder. Yeah, the referee spotted that one, but mind you, was there much difference than that one and the penalty oh. opportunity down the other side? I think uh, uh, Donald Moore seriously relieved over that penalty situation. Now, again, listen, Noah, Noah Grimes probably but possibly going to hit this. No, uh, Cormac Drain's going to hit it. This isn't a, 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 an easy kick into this win, so it'll be interesting to see just how he fares out with Off this here. But as well, Matty. You know, Rathmore's possibly had... The, the better of the play, but Donald Moore starting to grow into the game. Yeah, just two points between the sides. This kick just, what, three metres inside the 45 metre line. Kicks it, oh, gets great contact. Oh, oh, the, sound of, the sound of that, oh. Matty, it was perfect right from Listen, the moment he struck it. I tell you what, there's a huge, there's a fantastic atmosphere here tonight. They, they, must, they reckon somewhere in the region of 1,500 people are here tonight. There's a fantastic atmosphere, a fantastic night for Gaelic football. And I tell you what, the, that, that is some skill from, from Cormac Drain to strike that ball into that win. And that's a, that's a real confidence booster for Donald Moore right now. Yeah, as soon as he hit it, you knew it was so oh, the sweet the smooth. Of it, yeah. the, you can tell by the sound of, of, yeah. of how you place the ball. You should never look to see as a forward strike in the ball. You should never look. You should know by the contact of, yeah. of the kick as to wh wh where the ball's going and the crowd tells you the rest yeah. as it did there now. Certainly did, certainly did. So that narrows the gap just down to one point. That goal, of course, coming early in the game from Gareth Cowan in the second minute. But since then, it's been low scoring. It's been entertaining, but low scoring. Two points from Cormac Drain, one from play, one and that one from a free. Means there's just a point between the sides. Noah Grimes uh, might try to level matters up, goes from it from distance, but again it's gone to the left-hand side as we look out from our vantage point here, opposite the stand side, and goes to the left and goes wide. Third wide for St Joseph's. Yeah, and listen, they got to start getting one of those there. Rathmore tends to kick the ball out to Orrin Arthur's Rory Grant at midfield but in fairness I have to say James Rafferty's been fantastic getting underneath that breaking ball and that's setting up the attack and play Do uh, Rathmore can't get back and set up so Donahue's an opportunity there Ryo with the kick and drops down oh left behind on that occasion by uh, uh, Fintan O'Boyle and therefore the opportunity for uh, the man from Donald Moore to come again with Leo Hughes gives go. it back inside to Donny. that's the equaliser from Dara Donny. as I said earlier he scored two points in the semi-final well he's got a point in the final as well has the young 16 year old from Galbally a fine score yeah listen that kick out killed them there they kicked it straight down the centre to Rory, Rory Grant and there was three Donald Moore under, underneath it and in fairness James Rafferty had a super catch and once they're attacking from that area the midfield area listen that will Rothmore can't get back and get set up and that's the wee problem that they've got to deal with right now. This time slightly out to the right hand side as we look out but again won by Donald Moore, tackle goes in and McGurk looks as, as if he has turned it over but there, again it's there to be won and on this occasion it's uh, Donald Moore who have won possession and have uh, an opportunity to come forward again, ball fed inside, the mark could have been called there by Cormac Drain but wasn't, elected to play on but still uh, Drain goes for the post, goes to the left hand side and goes wide, fourth wide but again they're starting to dominate that midfield sector yeah, and the, get control the, the, of the ball. Conor O'Neill at seven and James Rafferty at five are taking anything that's come in that particular area. This was something that, we, that we've seen in the semi-final where St Louis couldn't get a ball in midfield because those two guys were pushing up at the wings and then they were attacking from that area of the football field and the defence can only hold out so long they have to start winning the breaking ball that dirty ball around that middle area of the football field. Yeah, ball chipped out on this occasion intelligently by Ryo or Kayo on that occasion gets it out there to um, Shea Ferris who has moved over this side of the field he has handled some ball in this opening half uh, Matty and there he goes again we'll bring you in in a moment when this move finishes as Shea Ferris comes striding forward again tugging the jersey referee allows play to continue ball fisted over now into the hands of Rory McElean McElean leaves it on this occasion for Donegan McGurk McGurk lays it back again through the centre into Oren Arthurs Arthurs 45 metres out Lays it back to where it came from. That's Donegan McGurk. McGurk elects to give it to Rory Grant. Grant in possession. 
Gives it off to his midfield partner, Orn Arthurs, fed in long on this occasion, trying to get it as Fintan O'Boyle, but again, well defended on this occasion. A little bit of afters going on to their left-hand side, but that's quickly sorted out. Goalkeeper uh, Leo Quinn came out and pulled his player out of it. Intelligent play by the young man. He's only 15 years of age, as Leo Quinn. Lays it off there now to Matty McNally. McNally goes to ground, and the referee awards a free, and this should be the opportunity for Cormac Drain to put his school side one up in this <coughs> McLaren Cup final. Yeah, listen, Rathmore's kicking the ball away poorly. That was a poor pass into the full forward line. The sweepers got it, and when Donoghmore's breaking and running, I'll tell you what I like, Matty McNally's actually, mm. he's not playing full forward, he's playing out around this, between the two 45s, and when they're getting a wee give and go to the runner, it's open and serious doors, but I still like what they're trying to do. They're trying to get find that one, that kick pass into Noah in the full forward line and create that isolation. Ooh, has he pulled, he missed, it, pulled uh, that one too? It looks as if he has pulled that. Yeah, that's a poor miss from Noah Grimes. And you wonder, Cormac uh, Drain has hit two cracking points, one from play and one from a free, the free from the ground. He's left footed. You would have thought it would have suited. So you know what I'm actually going to say? Rathmore's going to be very, very happy to be still to, be, to win this game. Mm. It's three all right now. They're going to be delighted because the one problem of winning semi final so handy is that, you know, there's. It can be the worst thing ever happened uh, to you in terms of a football complacent. match. It is. It's very hard when you won so handy and played so well in the semi-final. You come into a final. I still say Michael Morgan. That he wants another goal, and another goal really changes the complexity of this game if they can get a quality ball into him. Well, but, but again, James Rafferty. Yeah, that's the problem. That James Rafferty, Shane Scullion. They're, they're really they're starting to dominate that area there at the football field. Yeah, Rathmore are struggling to win their kickouts, and that is given uh, Donoghmore the uh, foundation to ease themselves back into this game. They've scored three, the last three points, and here's another uh, chance for them. Ball in the hands of John McKenna. McKenna lays it off. Rapmore would ever be behind the ball, bar one player. So they'll work across and filter across this side now, looking to uh, stop the green and gold jerseys coming forward as Shane Scullion gives it off there to that man McNally. He's been playing a very, very intelligent game for Donald Moore so far, but again turning over the ball is that man Rory Grant. Very, very hard working player is Rory Grant. Does well, gets his side moving down this near side of the field. Ball in the hands there of Oscar Conlon. Conlon running into a bit of a cul-de-sac. Referee sees nothing in that and I think he was right. Yeah, Joey Clark, super tackle Joey Clark. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic to hold, hold his timing and a brilliant turnover. Cormac Drain lays it off there to Dara Donaghy, the man who got that last 11 and point for St. Joseph's, gives it to John McKenna. McKenna spreads the play out over the far side of the field. You're watching Ulster GA TV coming to you live from the Queen's Sports Centre here in the dub in Belfast for this McLaren Cup final. Matty Madlinen alongside me, Jared Tracy here on co-commentary, enjoying this uh, first half in this final as the men from Donagh Moore playing in the first First ever McLaren Cup final. Search for another score. A score that will give them the lead as we approach half time. As Jude McNally picks up possession, gives it back there to Joey Clark. Clark from the Donald Moore Club comes inside, does really well, looking for help. Yeah. Overcarried. He just didn't have the person. He needed Shane Scullion him. to he come did. off the shoulder. He yeah. needed him to, to break that line yeah. and just pop the ball. He was looking to pop the ball. You could see what he was looking to do. Shane Scullion stood his ground. And in fairness, listen, referees having a super game. You yeah. know, He's letting it go, and he's well. He's, he's you know what you get with right. Kevin Falloon when you meet him, any day he's out refereeing a game. He'll let plenty go, but he'll, he, in the majority of times, he will make the right call. And on that occasion, he made the right call. It was over carrying, and the free goes the way for Ratmore. Haven't scored since the second minute of this game. Can they change that stat as they come forward with Matthew Lloyd? Lloyd gives it now to Rory McElhane. As you say, the route into Michael Morgan when we look up is now closed off by a couple of double sweeper in there at the moment as Connor Logue comes forward. They'll have to run the ball close to the sideline, too close to the sideline, out over the sideline it goes. That gives great confidence to Donald Moore. Three Donald Moore men hunting him yeah. up the sideline. There's, there's, there's nobody coming to support him in that situation. He's in isolation and listen, they just shepherd him out over the sideline. Yeah, they've certainly upped the ante this last 10-15 uh, minutes of this game as Leo Hughes, the 16-year-old from Dungannon Clarks, comes forward with it, lays it off. Bit of space now for 
uh, Donald Moore to work him. Ball down below is there in the hands of Jude McNally. McNally lays it off there to Cormac Drain. Drain back to McNally. Coming forward. Inside it comes again. Good ball by Matty McNally. Can the finish with a score? The hands go on, but the referee allows play to continue. And that's big John McKenna, yeah. a big midfielder who's got growing presence in this game, winning dirty ball, winning kickouts. This time following up and helping his attack off the shoulder, pops it over the bar. Yeah, that's what Shane, that's what he was looking from Shane Scullion in the last play. But John McKenna's took it on and Furness. There was a half goal chance there, but a, a point is a beautiful score at this particular time. Yeah, fine score from John McKenna as we approach half time. Ah, super hands, super hands from Michael Morgan. Yeah, further out the field he comes. I think that's a wise decision to try and get him involved in the game. What a run by Morgan. Still he goes, what a run. Can he lay it off? He does lay it off. Opportunity now for Rory McIlain, but McIlain's shot goes to the left hand side and goes wide. A, a poor wide, it has to be said, because Morgan done brilliantly and laid it off there to McIlain and really should have been tapping that one over. Yeah, listen, it's a, it's a Rory McHugh run from the academy playing playing Holy Trinity last weekend. The, the power of that man just driving through. He was just th throwing men out of the way. Yeah, I think that's a move that, uh, you know, Rob Moore were crying out for to try and get Morgan out the middle of the field to try and get them a foothold in that area because Donald Moore were really really dominating that midfield sector this last 10 yeah, or 15 minutes massive lift for them but listen they need more, more from Rory McArlean he's in the game and, but he's, he needs to get in and get on the end of a score oh Joey Clark's ball in there caused a little bit of problems rising up for it there was Conor O'Neill but again it was well defended by Rob Moore dealt with it reasonably comfortably oh ball spilled on that occasion but coming in and retrieving the situation and getting it over there to Orn Arthurs uh, for Rat Moore to uh, come forward to seek on the level matters just before half time the referee says that there's a foul in there and the free will go the way of Rory McIlain McIlain who missed that chance a few moments ago gives it over towards Thomas Lloyd Lloyd from the St. Bridget's Club gives it over one more time to Oscar Conlon Conlon lays it back Ratmore coming forward in possession is Oren Arthurs Arthurs 60 metres out patience Donald Moore filter back behind the ball Give it, gets, goes to Matthew Lloyd Lloyd gives it to I'm not sure whether they're related or not I'm sure they are Thomas Lloyd no. ball is brought into the tackle and pulled down on that occasion and Joey didn't need to do no. that he, he, he looked to be running out of steam he was the legs looked tired he had nowhere else to go if you can just hold on another one two seconds you know it's just the it's a wee bit of discipline it's a free out the other way yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely big kick for Rory McIlain I think it is yeah the spectators behind the uh, goal certainly aren't helping them beating the, the banners making the noise McElean does well he, yeah. he keeps us calm keeps us cool pops it over the bar super score from Rory McElean sides all level yeah Rathmore needed that there it's a huge lift we're coming into half time here now they needed that there Donham Moore has been sort of wasteful again it's going back from what they, the way they played in the semi-final they had chances there and that there is a half time whistle they're leaving things behind them here but again I, I think the, the wind possibly is definitely Rathmore had the wind in the first half which was an influence in the game and Donald Moore certainly listen it's a draw yeah. you're at half time in a final and it's a draw so that's job number one so you have 30 minutes to, to address whatever you need to do and get at it you go into the dressing room now and you're uh, Niall Kelly the St Joseph's uh, manager what would your message be? just to be patient I think that's the big thing they've created they're taking the ball into tackles and that's what's hurting them right now when they when when they give and go and have a third runner that's when they've picked off their scores when they've had two men going Rathmore have been fit to get two or three men around them and close out them passes but as the game has wore on they've got some great scoring chances from this side just relax a wee bit more just concentrate on your kicking technique when, when you're when you're in front of goals and just let all your training come to play they kicked a lot of ball at the start of the game into the full forward line now they're started they're running the ball now more but that's also given them more time to set up and get maybe 12 13 players behind the ball that means that uh, st joseph's done more have to be patient well, what the, what, one thing that, is, that I, I notice here is that Rathmore have taken Michael Morgan out of the full forward line mm. and they don't have a threat in the full forward line once Michael Morgan is out there. But unfortunately, they can't afford to leave him in there when they're not getting quality ball in there. So if Donald Moore can keep Michael, 
I would be of the opinion if you can force Michael Morgan out the football field then the game is very much in your hands because Michael Morgan is the biggest danger that Donald Moore have and if you're in grow Adam's shoes in the dressing room what would you be saying to uh, his players just patience mm. defensively they're they're doing nothing mm. wrong they're, they're pushing Donahmore out to, to wide area shooting they're kicking wides and you know when you start hitting a few of those wides defensively they're nicely set up they just have to be patient they go into the tackle turn them over and they've got a they've got a break and run hard possibly if Michael Morgan moved to centre half forward possibly that it allows him that he's not out too far away from the goals but also if he can pick the ball up at that particular area of the football field we've seen him in the first half of that run down the centre when he goes to goals he's a very difficult man to stop Gareth Cowan got a goal in the first uh, couple of minutes of the game a dream start for him Fintan O'Boyle the captain uh, those two players 13 and 15 we haven't probably seen enough of them is that fair? we haven't but you know what I'm going to tell you the two defences are doing a super job mm. you've got to give credit where it's due Donald Moore's two sweepers of Ben Cuse uh, and jo Joey Clark you know both teams are set up very very defensively in terms of what they're doing they're playing break and run football they're trying to get a quality ball into the full forward line and in, and in fairness they're, they're, they're open and playing football and although it may not be a high scoring game the quality of the game the tackling in the game Kevin Falloon I think is having a great game and that he's letting it go but Donahmore is starting to spread the game I keep, I keep coming back to this point there's a line in this football field that everybody seems to the 15 on 15 are playing inside that line and if I'm trying to break down Rathmore I've got to try and suck at least two of their players outside this this line, which is probably about it's probably about ten meters in from the actual sideline. If I can pull that those players out there, they're trying to get Noah Grimes on the ball. But from the time Noah gets on the ball, Rathmore two or three players around him, and he's nowhere to go. And Noah's probably frustrated in that he can't get the isolation that he has enjoyed in the last and the freedom he has enjoyed in the last couple of games. And you know, Donahoe just need to be patient. That's the voice of Matty McLean with us here on Ulster GA TV. We could talk the whole way through half time about this game and of course the McCurry Cup final coming up uh, on Sunday. But Matty has a, a better offering of a cup of tea somewhere, I'm sure, and he wants to get to that. So we'll take a break here at half time in this McLaren Cup final at the Queen's Sports Centre at the Dub, where the scoreboard reads St Joseph's Donnock Moore, four points, Ratmore, a goal and one. Don't go too far away because we'll be right back with second half coverage.
Welcome back to the Queen's Sports Centre here at the Dub. Second half about to commence in this the McLaren Cup uh, final between St Joseph's Grammar School in Donnockmore and Ratmore Grammar School in Belfast. The sides locked level at half time on four points to Donnockmore, a goal and a point to Ratmore. Our referee Kevin Falloon just about to get the action underway, ball thrown in. I believe there's one change on the side, more on that in a moment as McKenna comes forward for uh, Donick Moore. An opportunity for an early score. Leo Hughes in possession, good play from Hughes, still going. Can he finish? The ball goes in, looks good. Fine score, opening score of the game from Yeah, lovely Hughes. step, lovely step, I have to say. He just he, he showed left, step right, and took two, 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 two defenders and just ran through. And that's, that's the score that they've needed to set this down now. Yeah, just 25 seconds gone in the second half and Leo Hughes pops up with a very early score of course. St Joseph's Donald Moore playing with the advantage of the breeze. I think we've seen number 33 for Rod Moore, Sonny Doyle, just 16 years of age from the St Bridges Club again coming on the field of play. We'll pick that up in a moment but we'll follow the play at the minute as Donald McGurk comes forward for Rod Moore looking for an immediate response there. Gives it to Fintner Boyle, the captain of the side. Yeah. Well dispossessed He's again. Fabulous tackle, absolutely fabulous tackle. The timing is absolutely spot on, and Matty McAllen is the link player that they're looking to get on ball. Yeah, you keep calling him uh, McAllen, but I'm going to call him Mc McNally. Oh, McNally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we let you off on that one. Carrickmore country. <laughs> that's Carrickmore it, country. That's it. Yeah, the ball goes out over the sideline on the far side. The, the play went on, but the flag from the linesman over the far side uh, had gone up, which indicates that that is a line ball to the Ratmore Grammar School over there in a packed sideline of course the stand in front of us as well packed uh, to the rafters a great crowd down this sideline there must be Matty, there must be 1500 or 2000 people here this yeah, evening fabulous crowd great atmosphere at the game of day for for a college of football match listen it just it's the nature of college's football people love coming out at parents grandparents family they're all out to see the game tonight yeah and if they can't see the game live they can listen and watch it here on ulster ga tv as that man leo hughes comes forward again just 16 years of age lays the ball back this occasion to um mj mansell <coughs> mansell gives it over there to joey clark clark over the far side of the field donald moore looking for further scores they lead by one five to one one ball now in the hands of dara donna he got a point in the first half donna <coughs> feeds it inside Still, Donald Moore retain possession. Ball back out. It comes towards Leo Hughes. Rap Moore with every bar, two players behind the ball. Ball in the hands now of Cormac Drain. He slips it over one more time for uh, the men from Donald Moore. In the hands there of Dara Donahue. Back and cross. It comes again there looking for Cormac Drain. Drain with the left foot. Scored one in the first half from play. Ah. Can he get a second one? The answer is yes. What a wonderful score from Cormac Drain. Over the bar it goes. It's his third of the game. Two from play, one from a free. What a super score. Yeah, I'll tell you what I really like with this. John McKenna is pulling the, 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 the midfielders out of the centre and leaving that space. And Cormac Drain's nearly like playing quarterback and just stepping into that pocket, getting the ball, and then a beautiful, beautiful score. Well, whatever uh, Niall Kelly said at half time, it's certainly working for the men from Donna Moore as they come forward again with McNally still going. Can he finish? I think it's going to the right and wide. Yeah, it just goes to the right and goes wide. Yeah, there's a confidence. We still have this situ situation that Rathmore are trying to deal with Connor O'Neill, James Rafferty, Shane Scullion, John McKenna. They're dominating that kick out, so they are. And then they're running. The running lines are hard. Matty McNally, very unfortunate there. If he just settles himself at the last second, you know, there's a score there to be had. Another ball on the pitch so the referee will wait until that one is moved off or will he? No, he'll allow the play to be to continue. Ball breaks, who does it break for? Going in there and doing really really well is Michael Morgan the man who had a storm and start to the game. Morgan goes to ground, referee sees nothing in that, <clears throat> allows play to continue. Morgan will need a little bit of attention, we'll follow the play. Ball in the hands there of Connor O'Neill. O'Neill a grown influence in the game. Jersey tugged, the referee says play can continue. Not for the second time however, <laughs> calls it back. There might have been three fouls in that one. Yeah, I think he eventually <clears throat> got his hand up there. At, uh, listen, again super attacking play. The turnover there on Michael Morgan was absolutely immense. Uh, John McKenna, Sh uh, Shane Scullion getting tackles in. They didn't rush in when he had the ball. They waited that two seconds till he had to show the ball and then gone and got it. But they're crowding that kick out, that kick out at the football field. 
I would need Rathmore need to speed it up a wee bit because Donahmore settled. They can read where he's kicking the ball and then they're getting at it. Here comes Ron Malloy, the captain of the side. He kicked five in the quarter final. He kicked five in the semi final. Has he got his first of the final? It looks as if he has. It comes back off the post just as it did for the goal in the first half for Rathmore. Pulled on. Still oh, has gone into the net. I'm not sure who got the final touch on it to put it into the back of the net, but that's where it nestles and the goal goes the way of uh, Noah, Noah Grimes, Grimes, I think. I think. Noah yeah, Grimes, yeah, we Noah agree Grimes. On that one. Yeah. Listen, super super play in around that square. Dangerous, dangerous ball. And in fairness, Noah Grimes, he's at a torrid time with Declan Mooney. He, he's at him and he's, he's getting into him. So he is. And in fairness to them, listen, a super take. Well, isn't it, isn't it ironic oh, black that... Black card too. Oh, black card. There's afters after the game, after after that kick, after that goal. Number 10, is it, Leo Number Hughes? Number thir 13, Cormac Drain, I think, is it? I can't just tell if he turns around and we'll get a look at him, but yeah. I think it's Cormac Drain. We just look around to keep an eye on that. And it's an unfortunate moment. Yeah, not sure what, what happened there. There's uh, after celebrations after the goal. But listen, it's been hot and heavy in that full back line. Matthew Lloyd's been uh, very, very clo close mark, and so is Connell Devlin, Deglin Mooney. So they have uh, Sonny Doyle is in there too, and they're all very physical around them. So there's a wee bit of afters at that celebration, and it's cost them. Yeah. Yeah, well, a lot of drama, a lot of action in these opening uh, six minutes of this second half. But the most important thing is the scoreline in on the top left-hand side of your screen. And that says that it's 1-6 to 1-1, one, one, five points between the sides. And I was just about to say, isn't it ironic that the goal that the men from... Oh, good, no, oh that's a tough call, that's a tough call. Brian yeah. Coos had a super hit there, absolutely super hit. And that's a tough call, I thought that, that was a free the other way. Well, referee, and then discipline's going to move it, move it forward. Point I was making was the fact that it came the sh the free drop short, uh, on for, and both goals came from frees that have dropped short. Yeah, it's a poacher's goal. If you're in, in around that goal, there's nothing like it. If a ball breaks there, if you're in the right place, that's what the, you know. The, the, those go those goals, very important moment in this game. Well, the Rapmore have only had two scores in the game. They've got Garrett Cowan goal and a free from Rory McElean. McElean's the man tasked with struck this free. Well. He struck it really, really oh. well. Super effort from Rory McElean, his second of the game. Yeah, lo um, lovely kicking technique. Really lovely kicking technique. You can see he's just kicking through the ball. He's not thinking about anything else. All he's thinking about is his kicking technique and a beautiful strike into that wind. Much needed, I would say, Matty. Yeah, massive. After 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 a team scores a goal, it's very important that the next score is a massive thing. And Rathmore have got it, so they have. And I see I think <laughs> that Joey Clark's possibly down there. Is that, is that, is that because of 14 players? <laughs> it's killing the clock time. It's being smart now. Well, that's what's going on. There's a bit of gamesmanship, I would suggest. Now, the referee is telling the goalkeeper, Leo Quinn, to get on with it. But Leo is not absolutely no rush whatsoever a little bit of attention still going on yeah, with the physio but he's beautiful kick back out on into the play really really quickly as this man John McKenna been really impressed with him in this game McKenna gives the ball down inside gets it there now to Dara Donaghy Donaghy oh, from distance what an effort from Donaghy oh, that looks fabulous. good from Donaghy over the bar at sales it's a second of the day he got two in the semi-final he's got two in the final what a wonderful score from Dara Donaghy we are right behind him Matty when he hit it and there was only one place yeah, was going that's Leo Quinn Quinn's, that, that's Leo Quinn score the goalkeeper. His pinpoint kick out to John McKenna. One pa the diagonal kick pass into the corner. And in fairness to Dara Donaghy, it's a super tactical switch at the start of the game to get him in because, listen, he's bouncing. He maybe had no pressure on him because he wasn't named in the starting 15. And he's absolutely having a fabulous game tonight. Just 16 years of age is Dara Donaghy. You know, Donaghy more actually fancy that they'll be moving to McCrory next year and they actually reckon their best team is next year. This is stepping stones in, in, so they are. So it's it's a fabulous night's football, and they're starting to play a bit of serious ball. Yeah, I see Oren Arthur's made his way off there. We just don't have access to the board uh, this side uh, to see who came on, but we'll try and pick up who the substitute was in a little moment or so. But it's certainly Oren Arthur's that has made his way off. One seven plays one two in this. Uh, McLaren Cup final. Yeah, Ben Coos is just the uh, uh, Sonny Doyle has been throwing his weight around there in the full back line, the full back line for Rathmore, and he has just sort of come out the football field to tell him that you know we, we've got tough men in this football team too. <laughs> well, Shea Ferris ran into a tough challenge there, but I've been really impressed by Ferris. He's done really well, stood up strong in that tackle, won his uh, college a free, and gets the ball to uh, down below is Cormac Blaney. I see on the field of play, so Blaney maybe is the man that came on there for. Arthur, so Blaney from the Breeder Club 
won an under 13 Division 1 Championship a few years back. Great name, of course, uh, the Blaney name in Down and in Breda now, as that ball is fed in. But on this occasion, it's well defended uh, by Jude McNally for Donald Moore, and they will clear their lines. Great pace coming out there down below us. What super pace on that occasion. Leo from Hughes is flying. Leo Hughes, super play by Leo Hughes. He got a side 50, 60 metres up the field. And the ball fed forward over the far side of the field. That looks like a free. Referee calls it and blows his whistle. And that is a free. And the referee calling another player towards him. Maybe yeah. a little bit of afters. I, I, I think, think it's that, looking that like... Is uh, that Ben Cuse, uh, that tackle previously? Michael Morgan maybe might be the man that he's looking to have a little chat with. Both of them are making their way to him. We'll just see in a moment well, what the result is. The, the, the book is out. And it's yeah. Morgan's first to be spoken to. Le Leo Cuse is having a brilliant game in that sweeper role. His, his break out the football field, absolutely superb. It, uh, his his reading they? of the game, yeah, he's a flyer. Yeah. Absolute flyer. Yeah, well, it's a yellow card for Michael Morgan. Crossfield ball, well picked up. It comes to Ben Hughes. Ben from Donald Moore. Won two minor leagues and two minor championships with the Donald Moore Club. Gives it to Conor O'Neill. O'Neill, slow start to the game, but he's certainly in it now. Involved in a lot of the good work that the men from Donald Moore are doing. The management team down below has advised recycle, and that they do. Gives it to Joey Clark. Clark spreads the play. Not more of every bar, two players behind the ball. Remember, Donald Moore down to 13, 14 players because of the uh, black card for Cormac Drain, but it doesn't seem to matter as big John McKenna yeah. comes forward again. McKenna gets a shot away, he got a score as we headed towards half time. He's got another point in this second half. Excellent score from John McKenna, he's a very intelligent player. Yeah, listen, Donald Gallagher's down here in front of us here, and he's just he's pumping the fist. He, he, he knew he was sitting in that pocket, and it was a beautiful score. That's two from the midfielder, and he again, they're big players. And Donna Moore are starting to step up a gear. Yeah, ball picked up now by uh, Noah Grimes. Grimes has support there, gives it there to Dara Donna. He scored a point from that sort of distance a few moments ago. But again, they've been told to recycle the ball, use the ball. It probably eats into the clock a little bit as well because they're down to 14 men. We've played 12 minutes of the second half in this, the McLaren Cup final, coming to you live here on Ulster GA TV. Ball fed across there in the hands of Shane Scullion. Scullion being being turned back but treads a nice ball inside. Still the opportunity presents itself for Donald Moore but Ratmore have defended this one well. There are plenty of numbers around the ball and they've broke out there over the far side of the field. I think it looks like that man Shea Ferris again. I've been really, really impressed by Ferris. This is a terrific run. Still going. Need support. That was Ferris. Excellent from Ferris. Oh, what a player he is. Oh, the, the ball hasn't been turned over. Going down and forging for it there. Oh. There's Rory McElane but the referee Kevin Falloon says there was a foot went in illegally from Matty McNally and the free will go the way of the men from Rob Moore and it'll be brought forward 10 metres for a little a little word in the ear of Kevin Falloon. Yeah, but uh, super tackling, uh, you know, they're hunting back and Donna Moore's chasing after them. They're not being lazy in terms of putting the foul. They're getting up beside them. They're getting a hand in at the right time. And Matty McNally is just unfortunate there in that, you know, it was a super turnover and he just he put his foot in where he just a wee bit over exuberance. Yeah, well, big kick for Rory McElane. He's delivered two in this game so far. This is difficult. It's against the breeze. It's 40 metres out. It's an important kick. Need to keep the scoreboard ticking over. Yeah, That's a super it. effort from Rory McElane. That is first class from Rory McElane. He's under a host of pressure to try and keep his side in this game. He knows the importance of it. It's a final. It's a big crowd. It's been broadcast live. But he has kicked that one over the bar with some applause. Brilliant yeah. score. Yeah, he has stepped up. I believe he's Paul McElane's... Uh, Son, I believe, and Paul McElane was a very famous Antrim footballer, as yeah. we say, back in the day. <laughs> so he was. So, listen, it's good to see that the, the next generation's coming through. Yeah, it could be a turnover here as yeah. well. Brilliant tackling by Rob Moore. That's great hunger oh. and great desire, but the ball has been turned over Connor again. Connor brilliant. brilliant. I spoke about him a few moments ago. There was a growing influence in the game. Shows it there again, the tenacity to get in and win mm. that ball and turn it over for his side and get Donald Moore moving again. They're in possession. The ball will come this near side of the field towards Leo 
Leo Hughes. Hughes, 16 years of age, striding forward. Great pace if he wants to apply it. 45 metres out. Lays it off there to Dara Donaghy. Another 16-year-old. Cross the line it goes into the hands there of John McKenna. He's kicked two points in this final so far. Lays it back. Running down the clock a little. They're comfortable. They lead by five. They're trying to draw Rap more out. Create a little bit of space inside. Shane Scullion's the man in possession. Gives it forward. Good tackling again by Shea Ferris. What a player. Shea Ferris. So brave there. Went in and won that well. That looked like a free on Shea Ferris. But the referee is allowed play to continue. I think probably the game needs to be maybe stopped because Ferris has picked up uh, head yeah, injuries he's there. Stop it now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think the referee, you know, I, I don't like to be critical, but it looked like a free on for Shea Ferris uh, early the doors. Two young men going a hundred percent for the ball, and in fairness, uh, Shea Ferris is absolutely fabulous game in that area, and there was, there's no pulling out of that ball. Both men going hard for it, and that's just that's the nature of what this game is about. And yeah. listen, there's two teams going after it, and lads really trying to give it everything they have and it's just unfortunate but I hopefully yeah, I think it'll be, be okay he's, he's been really really super as Shea Ferris right from minute one yeah absolutely he's been one of the standout players uh, Daglan Mooney too ha having an absolutely super game on Noah Grimes who's one of their best players L listen they're, they're showing seriously well Matthew Lloyd too Thomas Lloyd Donahmore just have more options in terms mm. of forward line, in terms of shooters. They're now starting to be a bit, a bit more patient in terms of pulling Rathmore to one side, mm. then changing the angle of play, and then they have runners off the shoulder, and that's just, the, the extra shooters is, come, is showing to them now. Here's another chance for one of the shooters, that's Noah Grimes, drops it in, but the goalkeeper, uh, Keo, does really well. Does well, uh, as the ball comes out now to uh, Lloyd, down below us. Coming forward with it there now is Connor Logue. Logue needs support, threads it inside, does well, gets it over there to Deglin Mooney. Mooney over the far side of the field. Opportunity for Gareth Caron. Or sorry, it's uh, the sub that came on there, that's Sonny Doyle. Doyle fed it in long, but it's gone to the left hand side. Yeah, and straight, gone straight, line, straight line kick pass yeah. into the corner. Yeah. You know, it's 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 really a name in this modern game that we're playing now. A straight line pass is always going to be defender's yeah. pass. Yeah. A full forward, Matty's crying out. My, Michael Morgan, sorry, he's, he's crying out in the round edge of that square, looking a 20 meter run left to right of that particular D, and they're firing ball into the corner. It's of no threat. Yeah, yeah. No, needed to calm himself and survey his options as a good ball is kicked out again, threaded through by Leo Quinn. Will it didn't find his intended target, but it does find a green and gold jersey and well picked up and well threaded through there by Noah Grimes. Excellent ball, but well defended again on this occasion for Rap Moore. That's that man that started the game, Oscar Conlon, done really, really well to be fair to him. Yeah, the, the beautiful ball from Noah Grimes, full forward, you're coming out in front, you've got to win that first time ball all day. Yeah. Rory McElhane gathers it, gives it back to McGurk, Donica McGurk, into trouble he goes, referee sees a foul in that one, and McGurk will take it, six foot two is Donica McGurk, a big lad, one and under uh, 15 championship, or two under 15 champions, and the two failed championships with St Bridget's, ball floated in by McElhane, is there a goal in it, well, they retain possession, gets the free, oh good block on that occasion, excellent block and comes into the hands now of Conor O'Neill, looks like O'Neill has been fouled, referee agrees and the free will go the way of Donald Moore, not sure who yeah, put Leo, in the block. Leo, Leo Cuse again, yeah. Leo Cuse, right place, right time, Michael has no left foot, if he turns left footed there he's he, he's one on one with the keeper, he come back inside and there was three Donald Moore men lining up for him so they were. They've been, they've been well worked in terms of working out how, where, where tactically he's looking to go with the ball. John McKenna coming down the centre here is having a super, super game. Surely is, surely is. And so is this man, Conor O'Neill. 18 minutes played in this second half. And Donald Moore are certainly in this end. Conor O'Neill still going strong. Referee's whistle goes. And that's a free. It's been a terrific year for schools football in the county of Tyrone. Of course, congratulations go the way of the Dean um, Dean. College in Carrickmore on their Marquee Cup victory the other night in Rossley over a gallant uh, Kalashta Column Kill. 
So that's the first uh, cup that has gone the way of Tyrone. The second one. Yeah, there's a heading. rumor. There's a rumor. Big end. Kilpatrick's going to retire now, and he's got his cup. So he has. In fairness, him and Gavin McElroy have been soldiering a long time in that school, and it's uh, good to see them getting some reward. That man, that man retired a long time ago, mm. if you ask me. But anyway, yeah. ball fed in long, dangerous, dropping from Malloy on that occasion. Just about defended again. It dropped short and caused all sorts of problems. And now it's been turned over again, fighting for it, winning possession there as Mansell. Cormac Drain. Drain has he hit it? it. He has hit it. He has hit it. No. It's gone to the left and gone wide. And in fairness, as soon, it was Cormac Drain caused the turnover, won the ball, and in fairness, struck it really beautifully. I don't think there was much in that. The Hawkeye could maybe question that there. Well, he's had his break. He was off for 10 minutes. He's back on the field again. So, congrats to the Dean and to Gavin McElroy and Adelaide Kilpatrick, of course. Now it's going, it's looking like Donald Moore are going to win this uh, McLaren Cup final. And of course, there's two Tyrone teams in the uh, McCrory Cup final as that ball no. has floated in. Nope. It goes to the left hand side and goes wide. That was Cormac Drain again, two wides in a row from uh, St Joseph's, but they still lead by five points with just 10 minutes remaining. Yeah, that, that's. Th those are bread and butter scores. Mm. It, it reminds me very much of the semi-final where, you know, they were get, they were creating great and play. This this midfield section, this midfield eight that they have here. So they have Leo Cuse, Noah Grimes, MJ Mansell, John McKenna, Shane. They, they're winning great ball. They're, they're controlling that particular area of the football field. Yeah, They've got to ball. put the scores on the board. Yeah, break ball picked up again by Conor O'Neill. Can he finish with a score? If one man yeah. deserves a score, he does. Drops it in over the bar. Sweet kick there with the left foot from Conor O'Neill. What a talent this young man is. Over the bar it goes. Six point game. Yeah, he's marauding all day from wing half back. So he has and I'm glad you can see him get a score. There's ten minutes to go here and now they've got to really reinforce it in terms of what they're their, their dominance of this football match so far. Well, Donald, well, there we go. Some more of that dominance. Ball fed for Donald Moore playing in their first ever McLaren and Cup final. It's going their way. The ball is floated in by Noah Grimes off the this post into the net. There it you goes. Are. Brilliant goal again. Isn't it unbelievable that the three goals have came from kicks that of uh, two of them have dropped short. That one came off the upright down at the hands of the Donald Moore man and he banged it into the net game set and match yeah, I think that's Dara Donahue has got that there in fairness you know always anticipate Benny Tierney was a famous man for always shouting it's all coming off the post it's coming off the post and for, for a full forward line just take a chance it only has to happen once in the game and that's I think with nine minutes to go it's uh, you know they're starting to dominate the area and control this game. Well, it's the dominance that they have in the in the midfield uh, sector. That's that, that's the key uh, to to their to their victory. They struggled the first 10, 15 minutes, but since then they've really dominated that sector, and that's given them the platform, Matty. Uh, yeah, I tell you what I like. They're not running. You know when they win that area, it's one pass, and then they're trying to trade a pass through to a runner, and then a player coming off the shoulder, and that's really proving well. Noah Grimes has really started to come into the game. I see they've, ch they've changed him around. Connor Logue's now picking him up. Noah's getting a bit more freedom that he, he didn't he didn't enjoy in the first half, and they're starting to play a bit of ball. Yeah, well, there's a multitude of uh, changes uh, taking place at the moment, but we'll follow the play as Connor O'Neill comes forward again. Ball going to be recycled. Out it comes again. Still in possession. I think it was maybe Cormac Drain got that goal, uh, but um, not quite sure. We'll check that one out um, later on. But the important stat is that it's 2 9 to 1 3 in favour of Donald Moore. And there's only a, uh, seven, eight minutes left in the game as Donald Moore win themselves another free and another opportunity for them to extend their lead. They, get, they did come into this competition or into this final as hot favourites and they're starting to show that after a slow start they trailed for most of the first half it was only when John McKenna popped over a point in the 27th minute that they went 4-3 in front and then Rory McElhane leveled matters in the second half or just before half time but the second half has been a dominant show by um, St Joseph's Donald Moore Rob Moore have only scored two points and of course the men from Rob Moore or from Donald Moore have rattled in Two goals and five points in the second half. You know, Donald Moore's done a lot of serious work down through the years. It goes unnoticed, the likes of John McGrath, Paul Quinn, Paddy Corrigan. You know, they've been soldiering away 
driving at the game, driving at players. Donald Gallagher is down, down in front of us here. And there's oh, another goal. Oh, into the back of the net. Uh, this, is, this is a very strange one because Leo Hughes is the man that hit that, but when he was going up to hit the free, he, 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 he injured himself. I think it's cramp. I think it's no, cramp. Well, well, maybe cramp. Because he's walked his up, listen, he has yeah. ran himself into the ground. There's a GPS unit in his back. He has run himself into the into, into the ground. But before so he, he hit the free, Amari, he hobbled up to it, and then he stepped back again. And as he was walking up again to hit it, he was hobbling, and he didn't get the, probably the right connection on it. But well, it's a connection. Well, it just dipped nicely, dipped dip, dip nicely the under the, the crossbar. Yeah. You know, he'll he'll take it. He certainly will. A three. goal in the final is a beautiful thing. Yeah, three goals and nine points. Two, one goal and three. The last two scores are have been goals from the men from Donald Moore as that ball is floated in by Donald McGurk and it goes to the right hand side and goes wide. You know, so listen, Donald Moore just need they need to be disciplined in terms of how they play the game. That uh, they have done this at, at various stages in the game. Now, now have they they matured? And can they just keep the game, keep the game wide? I see they're starting to push out their, their wing backs out to the out to the sidelines. The kick out, I have to say, do you see the last ten minutes? Leo mm -hmm. Quinn hasn't kicked the ball out. He has passed the ball out yeah. to his midfield runners, especially John McKenna, whose timing on the ball has been absolutely fantastic. Well, and set up the play. It looks like um, on this occasion that it's Dara Donaghy that makes his way off the field of play for. Um, St Joseph's, we'll see you come on in a moment. I see for um, Rap Moore. A couple of changes for them is number 18, Rudy Smith, and also number 29, Donald Martin on the yeah, field of play. Th there's Cormac O'Neill again. The nice wee top down ball from, from John McKenna. And that uh, who, who's on the end of it? Only Connor O'Neill, and now they're just again just controlling the pace of the game, controlling the width of the ball. Joey Clark gives it over there. Ball threaded inside. Space beginning to open. Running through the sand, runners through the centre. Confidence high. Ball floated in, but going to the left and gone wide. But the gaps are opening. The heads have gone down a little on Ratmore. They've been rocked by those two goals, and it's becoming. Uh, pretty yeah, easy the, the, for the, the, Donald Moore at this uh, juncture. Listen, the, 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 the game is done. The, their dominance around the, mid, the midfield sector. I have to say, I, I keep saying it again. Conor O'Neill, James Raffrey, Joey Clark. They've really been in around breaking ball. They, they've pressed them in that particular area of the football field. And it's been the catalyst for what they're doing. So it has in terms of their breaking through and attacking. Yeah, I see Con Sweeney on the field of play. Uh, Carrick Moore, native. Also, number 20 over there, the Galbally man, Owen O'Neill, just 16 years of age as well, all getting a run out in this big final here in the Queen's Sports Centre at the Dub. Terrific conditions here, terrific evening for football. It's been an entertaining game, but it has drifted away from Ratmore in the second half, a very dominant second half from St Joseph's Donald Moore, playing with the aid of a slight breeze and still battling there is Thomas Lloyd. Lloyd is a judge to be fouled and the free will go the way of uh, Rap Moore and probably coming out to take it would be Rory McElhane. He'd probably just drop it into the, the zone and see maybe can the manufacturer a goal, a consolation goal is all it'll be. He's been excellent uh, with his free taking. He's kicked two super frees in the second half. The only scores that Donald Moore or that Rap Moore of God have. Oh, there, well, there you are. I thought it was going to nestle in the back of the net, or has it? Well, 45 again. Don't, don't buy one for the flag. And then, <laughs> then he put up his hand, so that threw me a little. So it's a 45. So, uh, do you know what I'm going to say to you? A beautiful venue for a football match. Oh, excellent! Yeah. A, a super, super night. Yeah. Brilliant crowd, brilliant atmosphere. You know, great promotion of our game in terms of both teams coming out here in terms of how they're playing, and you know, as, as a spectacle. Listen, great nights football. Connor Logue coming forward, an opportunity again. Logue floats it in around the danger area, up the go for it. Plenty of green and gold jerseys there, and they will be the ones that come out with it. Was that over carrying? Referee says no. Gives the free quickly. Yeah. There's a break. James Rafford here. again. Two yeah. wing halfbacks. They've been, they've yeah. been driving force for this Donahmore team tonight in terms of, they're 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 winning dirty ball ball that you need to you need to get get your hands on. They're always in that position picking up that ball, and that's just controlling the temperature for for Donahmore. Yeah, two very athletic players as well uh, are. Rafferty and O'Neill, one from Galbally, one from Donoghmore. 28 and a half minutes played.
brilliant evening. Two minutes left, so two minutes of additional time to be added on. We'll have one more minute of normal time and then two minutes of additional time. As you say, it's been a super evening for football here. Uh, you have to congratulate the Ulster uh, Colleges for putting on this show tonight. Uh, the crowd that it has attracted and of course the viewers all over the world watching this production here coming to you live from the dub McLaren and Cup final for 2023 it's going the way for the team that are playing in their first ever McLaren and Decider that is St Joseph's of Donoghmore they will be the proud recipients of the McLaren and Cup in a couple of minutes time we're now just edging towards the last 30 seconds and then we have two minutes of additional time controlling the ball down below us is Leo Hughes Hughes gives it to his full back that's the wonderful Ben Hughes Hughes gives it to John McKenna McKenna what a half so what a yeah, game he's, he's had he's what a, had second a fabulous half. game yeah. Mid, two scores from midfield he's been he's been I tell you what he's been, he's been very disciplined and mature in terms of his controlling the temperature of the game when to go when to just yeah. hold when to sit back and his timing of the run has been absolutely excellent. Yeah, I think I mentioned him before, his intelligence has been really, really impressive. Yeah. You know, where to be, his positional sense, how to use the ball. He's been really, really good. A well coached side, full credit to Niall Kelly and his uh, backroom team, of course, uh, involved in, in today's or this evening's victory. As Leo Hughes comes forward again, still full of running. Ball now in the hands of Conor O'Neill. Niall Kelly to Tom McGrath, uh, Paul O'Hagan. Listen, they've done a super job. Donald Gallagher as well. Yeah. Listen, Donald Gallagher's maybe 10, 15 years at the school. What he's done in terms of time and effort putting into teams. You know, it's great to see these men getting the reward. And when you have a team like this coming along, you know, you've got to make hay. You've got to go for yeah. it. You know, McLaren and Cup's a super stepping stone for these guys. And, you know, a lot of these guys you're going to watch next year playing McCrory Cup football. And for the school of Donahmore to be playing McCrory Cup football, you know, next door to the academy. Yeah. You know, football and thrones alive and well. Well, certainly is. It's going to be hard to stop. But it looks like here's O'Neill again. Another yeah. goal for O'Neill. What a goal from Conor O'Neill. And think if they were handing out Man of the Match awards, it would be a tough enough contest to elect who uh, would ultimately get it. But I know one man that would be in the frame. That is Conor O'Neill. And he's the man that has planted the ball into the back of the net again. Three, The last three scores for Donald Moore have all been goals from Drain, Hughes and O'Neill and that really does put the icing on the cake you know, for they, they have handled Noah, Noah Grimes fairly well Matty McNally too Ronan Malloy as well Cormac Drain as well and the one person they haven't seen coming out of, out, out of, out of, out of this game the night was a Conor O'Neill mm. and, and James Rafferty the two wing half backs and they're marauding forward the whole night and that's in a, in a, in a final somebody that come to, has to come out of the, the closet from yeah. somewhere else that makes a difference in the game and certainly tonight Conor O'Neill has been outstanding but he's been one of many listen yeah. around the football field Leo Coos playing sweeper absolutely fantastic night's football they have to be very happy with their display yeah, and just as you were talking Noah Grimes pops over another point to make it 4 10 to 1 3 is there a consolation score in this for the men from Ratmore this is the last play of the game because we've played the two minutes of additional time you were talking about men that deserve credit for their efforts at college football and you were naming a number of stalwarts there and you mentioned of course the the man Andy Gilpatrick and Gavin McElroy as well they deserve great credit but the credit tonight goes to St Joseph's Donoghmore they're the McLaren Cup champions for 2023 and deservedly so and look at the scenes down in front of us look at the invasion of young people out isn't onto the field wonderful to see isn't it yeah. absolutely Absolutely class to see this invasion all over the field, the noise, the excitement for these young players and young supporters as they invade the pitch here to celebrate and congratulate. I suppose what are their heroes after a magnificent victory? Four goals and ten points to a goal and three. It certainly wasn't that way at half time. The sides were locked level at four points to Donald Moore, a goal and a point to Rap Moore Grammar. But the second half it was a procession for Donald Moore. They had some wonderful performances as Matty has alluded to but the goals flowed in that second half. The first one coming from Noah 
Joe Grimes, then Cormac Drain, Leo Hughes and Conor O'Neill with three late goals to put a seal on what has been a magnificent evening for St Joseph's Donoghmore playing in their first McLaren in the cider and they are going down the M1 this evening crowned as the champions and that is a very proud evening for St Joseph's uh, 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 listen, Grammar School. Uh, the principal there, Geraldine Donnelly, uh, Donnelly will be absolutely over the moon. They have they've done a serious bit of work keeping Gaelic games going, working and coming up to the divisions. You have to understand, I don't think this team has won any competition till now. Mm. You know, I would have to go back and say, the work done in throwing clubs, you go to Bracco, you go to Moortown, Kildress, Pomroy, Carrick, Moore, Donough, Moore, Galbally, Eglish, you know, those, Eden Dark, those are the teams that have, they're, they're getting their football base from, you know, Donahmore have really come here the night focused. You know, I was really concerned after their, how easy they won the semi-final. For lads coming into a final, you know, how did they deal with that there? They've handled it really, really well. And certainly in the second half there, it was it was one, one, way, one, one way street. Yeah, they've been at the top team in this competition. As you say, they defeated St Mary's CBS Belfast in the quarterfinal 3-12 to uh, eight points and in the semi-final they defeated St Louis Ballymena 1-12 to five points and tonight they've rattled up another big score four goals and ten points to one goal and three and when you look through the ages of this team as well there's a lot of quality young players that will be there uh, next year the concern that I have and I, I have McCrory football in Armagh every, every player that you seem to mention tonight they, they, you're telling me 16 years of age <laughs> which is very concerning from my, from my point of view because if these guys are coming into McCrory Cup I know we, you, you know when a team's on the rise they have been coming looking McCrory challenges the last couple of years we would normal schools in McCrory Cup football would never have heard tell of the likes of the more and it shows you the, the work that's been done at grassroots that they now they now have their, their sights set on bigger things and they have a taste for this tonight and you know they're going to take a bit of shift and come come the All Ireland series just five of the starting lineup tonight are 18 years of age the rest are all below that do you know what uh, I'm going to tell I don't you know if that's good news uh, or bad. well put like this that uh, Niall Kelly and, and his backroom team you know he has something massive to build on heading forward into, into this calendar and even into next well, not, let's not count this season mm. has been over yet but it's a serious lift I tell you what it is it's a serious lift in that if they get an extra one or two players uh, you know Holy Trinity have an extra one or two players that makes some difference to, to your, your team roster and the way they performed tonight you know I really liked our style of play. Yeah. You know, they knew when to carry, they knew when to kick, the runners coming off the shoulders. They play a great brand of football, I have to say. I'm very impressed with how they've they've been coached. I love the I love the coaching you know Rathmore and Garrod have to take serious heart in terms of the coaching that they've done to keep the score uh, as what it was to half time. Tighters. Yes, yeah. the, you know you have to give them serious credit where it's, where it's due. They, they've, they have a couple of outstanding performers there in the night. So they Shea have, Fares in yeah, particular. Michael Morgan as well. Yeah. Rory McIlwain kicked yeah. two or three absolute clinkers of frees. You know they, they were great. Any any football match. Defensively they were they were solid. I don't when you say they conceded uh, four ten, but then last uh, the three goals came <coughs> very late in the game. But up to that they were. The, the defended well. That has to be said. You, you, you're, tr you're trying to you're, you're trying to stop a storm. Yeah. You know, once once Donahmore got to grips with keeping them, getting them, pulling them to one side, getting the ball wide, and you know, they took a, two of the goals came from from one, one forward reading that the ball might break. Mm. You know, they've got two goals off that there, and and that's a poacher's game. And that has really just was it was it was killer at that particular point. Yeah, the they game. have they have significant quality up front, and that that shone shone, shone through. They had, they had those more options and the, the the killer instinct in the, in the forward division. There's some really really top quality players, and then when when, when you have that backbone by the impressive John McKenna and Shane Scullion, there'll be other colleges across the other provinces will be looking at this and thinking. We'll have a work cut out handling these boys. You, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure who's going to pick man of the match, but listen, John McKenna had an absolutely f fabulous game. I thought Ben Cuse really got to grips with Michael Morgan then as the game went on. Uh, Leo Cuse, you know, where he may, he may not have gotten the score by that much, his reading of the game when they needed somebody to be cool in there is carrying the ball out of defence. Absolutely uh, superb. Noel Grimes, listen, he hasn't played well and he's still come away and be 1 2 in the game, so he has. Matty McNally had a serious play. He linked so well with Noel Grimes during the game. And you, you, uh, 
just around the football field tonight. Listen, they were their pleasure to watch. Yeah, I'm just trying to focus in. We're the far side here, looking over towards the stand. I can hear the the presentation, and I think our cameras are honing in on where that is at the moment. And it'll be Ronan Malloy who will be the man that will walk up the steps uh, to collect the McLaren Cup this evening. I think that might be the dulcet tones of uh, Jimmy Smith I'm here The legendary there, Jimmy it? Smith, yeah, the, the one and yeah, only, yeah. the one and only. Yeah. You know, you had to give a, a, a keep. I, I was a part of the Ulster Council for, for nearly 20 years there, so it was. The work done to develop schools football and the work done by school teachers around all the schools when you see the likes of this here tonight, the work done, and you know, people don't understand, every PE teacher across the country, said, every coach that takes extracurricular schools teams, do it for nothing, they do it for the love of the game and the promotion of the GAA. And it's, it's great when you've put years and years into coaching that you see the rewards tonight. We're just going to hear the man of the match. I think it will be Leo Hughes. Yeah, number ten, Leo Leo Hughes. Yeah, I thought he was super. Yeah, yeah you know. he really did. He you really know, when did. when the, when, when the game when the game was was still there and there was lots happening, he kept stepping up time and time again. And the one particular moment I'll pick is he had a block. I'm nearly sure it was him had a block in there near the square. And that's when you're putting the, your body in the way, you're sending a message to the other team that you shall not pass. And yeah. it's 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 a beautiful game. And I don't think it's it's a skill you can coach it's either in you to go down and, and get that ball or it's not yeah, and he's, of course he got his goal and he got a point early in the second half as as well so Leo Hughes a worthy recipient of the man of the match award as Ronan Malloy now comes forward as Jimmy Smith has the last few words and he just says that it's the first time that he has and that the St Joseph's have ever received the McLaren Cup, heaping praise on them for their work, and, and rightly so. Yeah, listen, the, 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 it's, it's the normal story. It's the unseen teachers in the past. Paddy Corrigan, I was chatting to before the game. You know, Paul Quinn, John McGrath. They've been coaching teams. Uh, Donald Gallagher. They've been working with teams and coaching teams all down through the years, and they've taken these guys from maybe grade four, grade three, grade two, up to up to today, and that's. It's a fabulous achievement. Here we go, the presentation over on the far side, the Danske Bank. McLaren Cup has been handed over there by a representative of the uh, Danske Bank and shortly Ronan Malloy will push the cup up into the night air here at Queen's. There we go. Listen to the cheers, listen to the joy uh, for uh, all the supporters, I heard Jimmy saying there that there's six clubs around the Donnockmore area represented on the team. So great joy for the clubs surrounding uh, the Donnockmore yeah, School. You the, 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 them there's, there's, there's 12 feeder clubs that's, that's into that team tonight. And it's, uh, but you know, that's thrown club football, so it is. Jared, you, you know the story yourself. Mm. If it's under 14 football, if it's under 16 football, it's under 18 football. And um, thank God it's that's a, that's, that's a story for another day, but we're delighted we're back to it. Yeah. But if you want to play competitive football in Tyrone, if your club isn't training three days a week, you're only participating. The, the work done in, in those clubs is. Is immense, and that's to, that's to take part. I'm not talking about winning in this situation here. That's to take part, and that's minimum three days a week. It, you, never mind face time or contact time in terms of in terms of meetings. That's the monster that youth football in Toronto is, and it's if you want to play at that level. And all those clubs that, that are feeding into Donna Moore, they're either in the, uh, Grade One in, in Toronto football, or they're pushing to get into Grade One, and it's. And, and it's, it's, it's a fabulous it's a fabulous thing to be a part of yeah and they're reaping the, the dividends as I said earlier in commentary the Dean of course and from Carrick Moore winning the Marquee Cup earlier this week in Rosley and of course tonight we have St Joseph's Dog Moore winning the McLaren Cup well, and well it's all first timers so it is Jerry. Uh, yeah, it's a first timers weekend and the McCrory <laughs> that's where I'm going and this will be my last question to you tonight the McCrory Cup final of course now is on Sunday in Healy Park in Oman what a crowd that will be there the whole of Tyrone will be there because it is an all Tyrone final between the, the, Oman they're all going to be added strange enough uh, big Rory McHugh sitting to stand down there in front of us at the game he's maybe sampling the atmosphere off it so he is it's, uh, What's your thoughts it's on a that final? Of the day. 
Who, well, I tell you what, I, I have seen, I've been blessed to, to have watched Holy Trinity now. They'd played Armagh in, in, the, in the last group stage. And I tell you what I like about them, they're aggressive. And that's a word that's going to, you're going to see on Sunday. They were very, very aggressive against us in terms of, similar to tonight in terms of how they tackle, how they go after men, how they chase ball. And Rory McHugh, admit, uh, you know, listen, at, at this level of football, you know, he ran through Dungan on at least three or four occasions and when they needed a, a power base to, to, to work off, he done it. You know, Oma have a sit well, they've, they've had plenty of time to look at the situation in terms of how they're going to nullify him, but that's going to be a massive... Uh, factor in the game. I'm not going to tell you a lie. His influence of just setting setting play. I've been to all the games. The Dungannon the Dungannon game could have went any road. Mm -hmm. And in fairness, at uh, the last ten minutes, it was it was it was helter skelter. It was an absolute up in Carrick Moor that day. It was a fabulous football match, and you had a similar crowd, believe it or not, mm. to, today. So that's uh, if well, you're asking a, me to call it. Uh, well, I'm going to ask you to call it. Oh, it. Uh, that's a serious forward unit that oh, CBS have. CBS have a, a serious forward unit, but I tell you what, young Faye, De Faye Devlin's young lads cornerback, yeah. and I have to say, defensively, I tell you what I really like about it. Okay, the coaching, they, they play uh, Holy Trinity play a forward press on a, on a kick out. It's something I've seen uh, Pom Roy doing this year with Kieran McGeary and his setup, and. Uh, it, it's how I'm going to tell you Jared. it's how Oma deal with that there mm. because you, if you want to go down the centre you can't because you McHugh down the middle so you have so you go out the wing they push their two wing half backs centre half back centre half back yeah. comes up they're, they're brave they're, yeah. they're leaving the guys behind yeah. and that was the power base that probably ch changed the game and, t and swung the game in relation to uh, uh, Holy Trinity's favour against Dungannon so call so it for me in a word <laughs> oh. I think you're heading towards the Trinity on a weekend of first? It's a, well, probably, I guess, it's been a weekend of first. So, you know, I think... You're heading that way. I'm heading that road. Right. OK. That's the voice of Manny McLean and he, with us here. Great to have your company, Manny, as, as Great ever. Great Re Really, really enjoyed it. And a wonderful evening up here in the Queen's Sports Centre at the Dub. But it's an evening that will be remembered long into the history of St Joseph's Grammar School because they have come to Belfast tonight. They've taken on Ratmore Grammar in the McLaren Cup final and they have been the victors on a final score of St Joseph's Donnachmore, four goals and ten points. Ratmore Grammar, one goal and three. The McLaren Cup will go down the M1 to Donnachmore Grammar School tonight and there'll be great scenes of joy and celebration in round Donnachmore and surrounding areas tonight because a first is always special. From myself, Jared Tracy, and from Matty Medlinen, thank you for joining us here on Ulster GA TV. And until we talk again, Slango Foyle.